All right there, a bit ago I reviewed the film Get Out. And because, unlike most of the other reviewers who have critiqued this film, my praise was not absolutely universal, I was asked to give a spoiler video. I'm not going to call this a review, I'm going to call it a discussion. My review, of course, is up. I recommend the film. It's a pretty good movie, particularly in relation to the other really bad horror films that are out there. And, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, if you're not familiar with the film, why are you watching this? But I'll recap. Get Out is a film about a, an African-American. He's specifically an African-American, not simply an African. A black man with a white girlfriend who is going to meet his girlfriend's family for the first time. And, of course, horror movie. Because that would be a horrifying experience for, for uh, many people. Meeting your girlfriend's family for the first time is horrifying and and well <laughs> you know I mean then add a racial element into it so there you are difficulties all around but but one of the things that all the reviewers kept saying is this movie's not racist and spoiler alert this movie is a remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers only this time the aliens are white people and the uh, victims are black people that's at least a little racist. They explain that the reason is that being black is in vogue and that they are they're kidnapping black people because they want the black experience. And I have to ask, dude, is this 1955? Because I remember that being a thing in 1955. It's not really a thing anymore. I mean, now we have Ferguson and police brutality and oh my god, it's so horrible to, to be a dark-skinned man living in America at the time. That was the climate I was reading from the news. I'm going to grant you that we had an African-American... No, we had an African... Well, we had a black man as a president. He is an African-American in that he has roots in Africa and is an American. But spoiler alert for, for those of you that believe in science or the Bible. We all came from Africa. Yeah, yeah, Bible, Tyrus and Euphrates River, that's where the Garden of Eden is, that's in Africa, we came from Africa. Uh, the rest of us, Fertile Crescent, which I believe is, is more, yeah, it's still, it's not like the darker part of Africa, but it's more of, I don't know. We all came from Africa. That's what it comes down to, we're all, we're all, that's where man comes from, that's where the human race comes from, is Africa. But here's the thing. Get Out feels very fresh because it is a very fresh take on an old genre, which is the Invasion of the Body Snatchers genre, which Invasion of the Body Snatchers, I believe, was a remake of Attack of the Pod People, which in and of itself is essentially a ripoff on vampire movies where the vampire creates doppelgangers of their victims who go around and do their bidding. So this is a very old, I mean, it predates film. It is a very old idea. Uh, I know that the classic example is Dracula, but I don't know, I haven't studied it up. So this is an old idea. It's not something new under the sun. It's kind of a fresh take. But this take does have, if not racism in it, it has a very racial element, which is the idea of turning uh, black men into Oreos. Something at the window. Anyway, and Oreo is a term... People have referred to President Obama as an Oreo, which means, essentially, if you look at an Oreo cookie, they are black on the outside and they are white on the inside. And this this is essentially what this film says is happening to these, these black people. They're being whiteified on the inside. It's like, look at his clothes! He Oh, that's not him! He wouldn't dress like that! Okay, and... On the one hand, you have to say, this is just a movie. It's just a movie. And that's what it is. I mean, I know that the, the author of this film, the author and director, I believe, are African American. And, you know, Jordan Peele, he may have that feeling that being a darker skinned person has not only just a physicality in it, a physical you can see that person is, 
but also a mentality. I would have to disagree with that, personally. I, I think that we as people are just people. You know, the, the body is merely a machine, and the brain runs that machine. But where the brain and, and body uh, come together, I mean, I don't think you should have to dress a certain way to be of a certain ethnic group. <laughs> that's, that's kind of silly. But, you know, we just take that and, and set it aside. This is one of those things. is a criticism people make of, um, you know, many, many in the African American community is that you're, you're an Oreo is an insult. You're, you're an assimilationist, or I believe the oldest insult in this is a, an Uncle Tom. So it's saying, you know, what, what happens when, when we are fully integrated into society? Well, we basically become just one of them. We, we lose our unique, our unique nature of culture. Which is one of those things. Now again, so that, that's the, the racial element. It's there. Take what you want from it. It's just a movie. I mean, nobody's saying these events are real. They may reflect our culture in a certain way, but I bet, I bet there are a lot of African Americans who are tired of hearing racist white people say, I would have voted for Obama for a third time if I could. Well, you couldn't, so that's kind of an idle statement. Now, there is a point, there is a hole in the plot that I have to bring up. This is, as a movie reviewer, understand something. Obviously, you've heard me talk about some movie history, some uh, story history, and so forth. As a movie reviewer, I'm more of a scholastic. I'm one of those people that wants to know the history of things. I look deeper into meanings. I, I examine these things as, as a matter of course. There is a scene in this film where, you know, our, our hero has his hands tied, he's tied to this chair, and he finds that the chair is frayed, and he starts pulling cotton out of this chair. We later from... This is a spoiler. Terrible spoiler. So, you know, if you haven't seen the film, you shouldn't be watching this video at all. But anyway, so terrible spoiler. We find that when they try to hypnotize him, what he's done is shove cotton in his ears so that, you know, he can't be hypnotized. But his hands are tied. And moreover, he shoves a cotton in his ears to play possum so that they will untie his hands so he can defend himself. How does he get the cotton from his hand to his ear if his hands are tied around his waist, tied to the chair? How does that happen? Literally, he would have had to have untied himself, therefore alleviating the need to play possum, stuff stuff in his ears, and then tie himself back up again, because it clearly shows him being untied. Even if he had one, one hand free, okay, let me see. One hand free, cotton, ear, ear, okay, that works. But then why wouldn't he just reach his hand over and untie the other side of himself, and then go find a weapon in that room which was furnished? So that's, that's a question that, that comes up. It's a hole in the plot, it's not a terrible hole in the plot. And I know that horror movies are kind of given a pass for holes in the plot because they're dumb. This is not as dumb of a movie as others. I don't say it's a horror movie, I'm going to give it a pass. I might say it's a low-budget movie, I'm going to give it a pass on special effects. But yes, to me, that is a hole in the plot. I can forgive the science, well, if you took out that much of the brain to accommodate the new brain, uh, that obviously wouldn't leave a personality. I can forgive that because, one, I'm pretty sure, you know, you didn't consult a neuroscientist on this because it's science fiction. But this is, there's that hole in the plot that really it detracted from the movie for me. It detracted 10% 10, 10 of the enjoyment. So I would have given this a movie a high B, now I give it a high C. Or maybe I would have given it a low A, now I give it a low B. But that's the thing. This is the things I see these in movies... There are points about that that bother me, so yeah. Anyway, so there's my discussion. Uh, Jess from Ghoulish Grim Films, who asked me to do this. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Richard Neal.